Hello, this is Joyful Hermit. I'm continuing on sharing um, the next to the last event that occurred back in uh, June. This was in June of 1988. And I want to express again that one of the reasons why I have chosen now to share these is um, that I have reconsidered and reread after 24 years and realized that some of what is in these messages can be of benefit to other people. This one in particular, I believe, can be of benefit to remind everyone, each of us, that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and God the Father desire union with each of our souls. And this is um, metaphorically known as like a wedding, that to, to be betrothed and then to have spiritual matrimony with his real presence, with the Trinity. So I want to give a little um, prelude to this one. Um, in about April of that year, I had a very lucid dream that I shared with Dr. H. And in the dream, I had been shown a wedding invitation. And on it was a very homey picture of like uh, the interior of a log cabin room, very rustic, with a little double bed with a quilt on it. It was very homey and uh, pioneerish even looking. And it was a wedding invitation. And when I awoke, I recalled, all I could recall was that it was a wedding invitation to me and that the date was either June 22nd or June 24th of that year. And across the bottom of this invitation, I remembered distinctly the words scrawled in, in handwriting. No, you're not feeling well, but hope you can make it. So I was telling this to Dr. H, and, and, and of course he knew, you know, that it would be wonderful. I, I think I was only 37 at the time, that it would be younger. Uh, wonderful if I would remarry, but that my pain level was, was probably very prohibitive to that. And my three wonderful children I had. So, um, and, and also, you know, I... I hadn't been dating anyone at all, and these marvelous experiences were happening, and Dr. H knew of my tremendous spiritual longings and spirituality, deep spirituality, and Christianity. So, um, and, and he knew, of course, you know, I, I wouldn't make the error of getting married that quickly. So the only thing I could think of was as a very long time and dear friend of mine had a wedding anniversary on June 22nd. And when you have these dreams, that we were familiar with my dreams. They were either always very symbolic or very realistic, you know, very actual, that, that was some kind of a forewarning. So the only thing I thought was just to pray, pray, pray for my friend that something maybe was going to happen with their marriage, or maybe also something wonderful, too. So I was praying for that, but for the most part, we sort of forgot about this, because these other, uh, I think there had been four already, incidents had occurred in which I was receiving verbal messages from beings, loving beings, from the other side. And so it, it happened to be that I, I was with Dr. H on June 24th, and um, we were talking, and I started to see this huge bloom appear, just huge and bright, rich golden. And I started describing it, and as I was describing it then, this other voice uh, took over and started to tell me things. But I was describing it first, and I could see it. It was huge in front of me. Blooms, barely the tip of yellow, and it expands and opens up, facing the sun, facing upward. It opens, 
and the fine petals explode in beauty. And this is how everything grows. And this is where the, the shift occurred. And we each have guides with us, God with us, but we have to wait, wait for the growth. This happens in God's time and not ours. And some wither and die because they cut themselves off from the source. And that with a capital S. And at that point, I could see a huge S to emphasize that point. So I knew it was God, the source. So we must go in the proper time and at the proper speed and with the proper nourishment. Touching on to the world only means touching on to hard, clay-baked soil. Nothing grows there. So why do you keep trying to move your roots and send down shoots into that desert soil? It is foolishness. Much of your earth time is wasted when you send tendrils over into that which is evil. And that evil can be thoughts or even actions of others who do not creep forward, but who remain in the desert. And you have been wondering in your woman heart whether the invitation would be at a worldly level, perhaps a meeting with a man of your heart's desire. And at that point in this, all of a sudden I remembered the invitation that I had forgotten. And this could be so, but it means at a more beautiful level, a union of a graduation into the ceremonious and yes your heart did flutter then and my physical heart did flutter the ceremonious union of a higher level of being of having succeeded in the determination to keep going and not of succumbing on infertile ground that is wonderful this is truly your heart's desire to have a spiritual growth and union, to be in attendance of the ceremony of your soul. So let not your heart be troubled, but take heart in your wedding to be wedded to higher levels of spirituality. And do not fear the joy that you have and which is expressed through your exuberance over the gifts that are given you at this your wedding celebration, a wedding that others may never understand or appreciate as you do. And I want, at another time, I am going to talk just specifically about mystical phenomena. But these things don't happen with pre-warning, usually. Um, it's nothing that you think is going to happen or you anticipate. I had no idea of these things. And in uh, years henceforward, I, I, the things are not programmed and they're totally unexpected. And it's also not for everyone. I felt that these things were happening back in 1988 because I was at an extremely low period in my life. And... If I had had great faith or greater understanding of the spiritual realities and of God and perhaps had already been Catholic or something and had the advantage of the sacraments of the church, um, maybe God would have worked with me in a different way. But the Holy Spirit had to reach me and reach me he did. Um, as soon as this message was over, Dr. H said, I don't know about you, but I would go directly to the library and try to find out what that flower was. Well, of course, that hadn't, wasn't had, what had popped to my mind, but somehow that impressed him, again, the Holy Spirit. So I said, well, I will. So I left his office. I went to the library. I looked up in the card catalog. They had card catalogs then. What was the, the flower section? I went to that section. I just pulled a book off the shelf, opened it up, and there was the flower. I couldn't believe it, but I mean, I had to believe it. I knew. 
after what I'd been through with that message, I knew everything was operating on a different wavelength that day. And the flower was this. If you can see it. It's a St. John's fort. And I read in the little, the little write-up by that flower on that page of that book a little bit about St. John's wort, and it said that, that it had special significance in medieval times and that there was a legend involved with it and, um, and that it had to do with St. John. It was named for St. John the Baptist. So I thought, aha, this is Catholic. You know, I wasn't Catholic at the time. So I asked the librarian, you know, where could I find out things about Catholicism? She said, oh, we have these Catholic encyclopedias over in the research section. Showed me where it was. So I looked up St. John the Baptist, and I found that um, his feast day was, ta-da, June 24th, that very day. And I read the legend then of this flower, St. John's wort, that on the eve of St. John's Day, that the young maidens uh, who were seeking a husband would put this St. John's wort flower, which blooms around that time of year, would place it in their window. And the next day, supposedly, the first man that they would meet, the first available, or, or uh, you know, uh, man available, marriageable, was to be their intended. And I knew that when I had awakened that morning, of course, the first man that I addressed in my thoughts and prayers was Jesus. So it was all just very incredibly beautiful. And um, in fact, to this day, well, when I went to Avila, Spain, to take courses, I, I it was around June 24th, that time period, the first part of July, and they had abundance of St. John Wort's growing there. And I knew that uh, as soon as I had my little house here and decided to have all Mary Gardens, that uh, what I found a St. John's Wort. Since then, I have found three different varieties of St. John's Wort, and they do bloom around June 24th. Each year, I reread that, the, the ceremony of my soul. And I also read it on the day of my confirmation as a Catholic on August 22nd. Um, so this is very meaningful, and I hope it's meaningful for you too, because Jesus wants all of us to be wed to him. And he now is with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, so it's a union of our soul with the Most Holy Trinity. And ask for this. Um, you can be married on earth to someone and still be married to the Trinity, each of you and your husband or you and your wife, or if you're single or if you're a youngster. Ask to be wed to Christ and, the, and his second person of the Most Holy Trinity, and somehow, some way, you will be in faith. You may not have some kind of a dramatic message. I needed that, obviously, um, or I wouldn't have understood any of this stuff. I, I wouldn't have made the connection. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have even gone to the library to look up the flower. I, I, I mean, it was all by God and the Holy Spirit that the first book I opened and right to that page was that flower. Um, it's all in faith. I took those steps in faith with guidance, and you will take your steps in faith. And know, though, that his real presence in some way will let you know, will let you know that it is so and that you are wed or betrothed. And the spiritual ceremony will last your lifetime. It's beautiful. God bless his real presence in you. Thank you.